1969 Super B. It's a California car, LA factory, numbers matching. It does have a little bit of rust down here. If you're buying a muscle car, this is really what you want to see. Let's light it up. Turn your driving dreams into a reality at Hemmings.com, the world's most trusted collector car marketplace since 1954. Hemmings offers live online auctions and tens of thousands of collector cars, trucks, and bikes daily. Pam? Hi. How you doing? Colin. Hi, Colin. Thanks so much for bringing this out. Sure. This is a kind of a badass move. I mean, you just <laughs> rolled in here in this super high impact Super B. Yeah. So, what's the story? I've had it six years. I thought I was the second owner of the car. Okay. So now I just found out that I'm like the third or fourth owner of the car. Okay. So, uh, I know it's a California car, and it's been in California the whole time. LA factory, numbers matching, so everything's awesome still, even if I'm the third or fourth owner. That's a very small amount of owners for a car this right. old. Well, you know why you're here. You yes. somehow got conned into doing this and bringing your, your pride <laughs> and joy over here for some stranger to go over and tell you what it's worth, right. which is a very personal thing. But I'm excited to know. All right, see Thanks. you in a little bit. Thanks. Thank you. So I've done my inspection of Pam's 1969 Super B. This is a really cool car. Yes, it has the base 3D3 engine. It's an automatic. It has a factory N96 air grabber fresh air hood. It's F6 green, which because it's a Dodge, is called bright green metallic. If it was a Plymouth, it would be called rally green. But to me, F6 is one of the best colors of the Mopar muscle car era. I love the color. I love it especially on a Super B. 1969 was kind of the pinnacle of Mopar muscle to a lot of people. And this B-Body Super B is a great example. Now, nothing's perfect. This is a driver. Pam bought it. She drives it, admittedly, a lot. She enjoys it, and she's doing everything right. Uh, let's take a look under the hood here. Because if you're buying a muscle car, this is really what you want to see. So now one thing you have to remember in the muscle car era is that the Super B was a low-cost muscle car. It was a competitor for things like a stripped-out GTO or other you know, entry-level muscle cars, if you will, especially with a 383. As such, you will see these cars with manual steering or manual brakes. This car has factory powered disc brakes, power steering, again, the N96 air grabber. So from a drivability standpoint, it's a lot easier to drive, it's a lot nicer to drive, but from a resale perspective and a value perspective, having these options adds a lot to this car. So in combination with the F6 green color and everything that's under here, it's off to a really good start. Now again, walking around the outside of the car, I grew up in the Midwest. These cars didn't make it out of the warranty without being completely rusted out. This is a California car, but even California cars can have a little issue now and again with the tin worm. And what I did see way down the bottom of the quarter panel is it does have a little bit of rust down here, just on the outer quarter panel, not on the inner, not on the trunk drop off, all the sheet metal underneath is beautiful. The floors are beautiful. But right here on both sides, you can see it's been repaired. Somebody put a little putty in it before they painted it and it's starting to bubble and crack again. If you wanna make this perfect, you're gonna end up putting some metal in here to fix it the right way. But even if you did that, you could probably blend out the paint and make it look really nice. Talking about the trunk floor and the floors and everything underneath, the frame rails, they're all beautiful. But when I was poking around underneath there, I did notice one thing. There's a whole bunch of tire rubber up under the rear quarter panel. So it looks like Pam's been having some fun with her Super B. Jumping inside, this car, again, is nicely equipped even in here. It doesn't have a bench seat, column shift, any of the, you know, the base Super B stuff you would get. It's buckets console, floor shift, wood wheel, has a clock. It doesn't have the tack, so somebody's hung the tack on the steering column here, which is A-OK -okay by me. Um, again, the car bear here, the little lever to pull for the fresh air induction, has a factory radio. The original dash pad is beautiful. The seats sit right, everything feels right. Because sometimes when you restore these cars and you put reproduction foam in the seats and reproduction seat covers, they just don't feel the same way. This car has the feel. Everything in here just speaks to a nice original car. And since I'm in here, 
and I have a key. Let's light it up. It starts right up, sounds great. Real nice rumble to it. Probably has some turbo mufflers underneath. The clock's working. Let's see if the radio works. Even the radio works. Probably beating a dead horse here, but this is a really, really nice car. I really like this car a lot. All right, let's take a look inside the trunk. All right, in the trunk, the good news keeps coming. Really nice panels, even silly little stuff like this. You see these little plastic caps on the end of these taillight studs here. This is a part that's often missing, even on a good restoration. Now it is missing the jack and the spare tire, but I have a pretty good idea that Pam probably took it out just because she didn't want it rolling around back here. A lot of people do that, keep the weight out of the car. And honestly, are you really gonna jack up your 69 Super B with the bumper jack these days? Probably not. If you have Haggerty, you call roadside assistance. So I finished my appraisal of Pam's 1969 Super B. I know she feels guilty about driving it so much, but it's an awesome car. I know what it's worth. I'm gonna call her back in here and we're gonna see if she agrees with my number or not. Hey Pam. Hi. Welcome back. Thanks. I've checked out your car. Yes. Your baby. Yes. I hope you're not gonna be too mad when we're done, so <laughs> let's just see where this goes. <laughs> Before I do all that stuff, what do you think it's worth? I think it's probably worth around 55. You know, I don't disagree with you. The problem is if it were just a regular old Super B and like not a California car, not F6, not with the air grabber hood and all that stuff, right. it's buckets console. I mean, everything's right about it. Yeah. You know, we know it's not perfect, you drive it, but the way things are today and muscle car prices, I think any day of the week it's worth 45 grand. Mm -hmm. And I think if you have a couple people that fall in love with it, like, I'm one of them, I love it, it's a great car. Yeah, I think in the open market today, I think your 55 grand number is probably pretty close to being spot on. So nice. I'm gonna stop doing appraisal shows and you're gonna take over now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it's a, it's a great car and uh, you know it's rare to find one so honest and original and uh, you know, again, the color right. is everything. You buy a muscle car for, for right. that visual impact and, and this car has it, so it's got the right stuff. Yeah, I was excited when I found this one in my backyard in this color. Yeah. The color combo too with black inside was like perfect. I do need to have a serious chat with you about one thing. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of tire rubber up under the <laughs> rear quarter panel. So can you explain <laughs> what you've been doing with your car? Uh, I drive her a little hard. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's, <laughs> it's a Mopar, it shouldn't break, right? Right, right, right. Thanks so much for bringing it. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you.